Glaciers, erratics, and giant sloths. Great walls of ice a mile thick. Huge boulders sitting all alone in the middle of nowhere. And, as if that were not enough, enormous tree-eating mammals. I'm Rick Sowash, and you guessed her, Chester, it's time to tackle the Ice Age on Ohio Rocks. Hey, a snow day, whoa. What if every day was a snow day in Ohio? Would you mind if every day was a snow day for say, oh, I don't know, 10,000 years? Well, something like that happened in Ohio about 24,000 years ago. In this corner, the Wisconsinian Glacier. In that corner, the great state of Ohio. When those two came together, they wrestled the land into the shape it has today. The last two million years of Earth history contains the Pleistocene epoch. The Pleistocene is known collectively as the Ice Ages. But during that time, there were a series of glacial advances or advances of an Arctic ice sheet south across North America. And in Ohio, we experienced at least three of those glacial advances. The most recent episode, at its maximum extent, approximately 20,000 years ago, is known as the Wisconsinan. Prior to that, the Ohio area was covered by the Illinoisan ice sheet about 250,000 years ago. And about one million years ago, we had a pre-Illinoisan ice sheet. A glacier is a perennial sheet of ice covering a land mass. And the way that it operates is it essentially slides over the land. It expands out as snow falls in the northern portions of the glacier, compacts to ice, builds up weight. The ice behaves plastically and essentially crushes itself down and spreads out over the land. Glaciers retreat not by physically moving backwards, but by melting at their extremities as the climate changes, as the climate warms the front of the glacier melts back over time. Well, when the glaciers melt back, all of this sediment that is carried with them is dumped out and left behind. It just drops out of the ice sheet as the ice sheet melts back. So the evidence of the outwash plain, all of the sediment that has, has been flowing off the front of the glacier through meltwater, large hill structures are sometimes left behind called moraines that are essentially piles of dirt and gravel bulldozed in front of the glacier and then dumped by these meltwaters. They can also leave a variety of grooves and marks in the underlying bedrock and glacial lakes as lumps of ice drop off and sink into the earth and melt. So there's a variety of landforms that we can identify with glaciers. A glacial erratic is a rock, a boulder, a cobble that has been carried by the glacier across the land surface and left behind as that glacier has melted back. We identify them as erratics because they have no business being in the area that we find them. So in the Cincinnati region, for instance, where the underlying bedrocks are primarily limestones and shales, we occasionally find at the surface large boulders of granite that have been brought south from the Canadian Shield by the glacier, caught up in the ice, and as the glacier has melted back, these rocks drop out and provide evidence for the past existence of a glacier in our region. What kind of animals lived here if it was nothing but cold all the time? And what the heck were they going to eat? As the giant wall of ice moved south, giant mammals were also on the move. I'm talking mastodons, stag moose, and giant sloths finding a new home here in the Buckeye State. The climate in Ohio was quite a bit colder, and so large animals were traipsing their way through Ohio. We had crazy things that that we don't have anymore, like saber-toothed tigers, mammoths, and mastodons, and giant ground sloths. A lot of these were built to withstand the intense cold that was coming off the, the edge of the glaciers. Many of the Ice Age animals that lived in Ohio would be familiar to us today because they are closely related to some living animals. We would have seen bison in our region, that is, American buffalo. Of course, we have bison still living out in the plains of the American West today. There would have been some larger examples here in the Ice Age, but they would have been quite familiar to us. On the other hand, there would have been animals that would be quite foreign to us. The giant ground sloths, for instance, would be something that there's really no living representative of today. There are tree sloths, but they're much smaller and much less impressive in scale. They would have reached, in some cases, perhaps a dozen feet tall, and uh, 
several thousand pounds in weight, lumbering across the countryside with very large claws that they would use to strip the leaves off of branches, but presumably also used for defense. We know about the existence of Ice Age animals in our region by the fossil bones that they've left behind. Most of Ohio's Ice Age fossils have been found in areas that would have been out in front of the glacial ice sheets. So many of them have come from southern Ohio, from the Cincinnati region, from the Ohio River region, and across, of course, even into Kentucky, where glacial outwash plains, melting waters and sediments deposited from the melting glacier out in front of the ice sheet would be a perfect environment for depositing the bones of Ice Age animals. However, as these glaciers retreated, melted back north, they would leave similar environments. So we actually find Ice Age mammals across Ohio in a variety of environments, outwash, lake environments, pond environments, bogs, these sorts of things. During the Pleistocene, or Ice Age, we know also that humans were part of the animal farm. We did have Native Americans living in Ohio and the Ohio Valley at the time of the last glacial episode. Human beings did live in Ohio during the Ice Age and in other parts of North America. Uh, we know that they arrived here sometime about 12 or 13,000 years ago in Ohio. There are dates across the border in Pennsylvania that indicate maybe 14 or 15,000, 16,000 years ago. We have dates, believe it or not, in South America uh, that are maybe 30,000 years ago. So we know that they were here, that they arrived here quite early. When's the last time you saw a mastodon? Are you worried about the ongoing saber-toothed tiger threat in your community? As if. Well, they were here. So where did they go, these giant creatures? As the glaciers melted away and shrunk back to the north, the environment changed, and most of the Ice Age animals, poof, disappeared from Ohio. The survivorship of plants and animals is closely related to changes in their natural environment. All of those organisms are very closely adapted to their environment. They have certain survival skills, certain adaptations that allow them to utilize the natural resources of the land. And as that environment changes, those animals and plants need to track the environmental changes and change with it. They need to evolve through time. And if those changes are so rapid that organisms are not able to track, then they, they go extinct. The environment and the climate in Ohio has changed uh, dramatically since humans have arrived about 12 or 13,000 years ago. Initially, it was very cool, uh, open grasslands, uh, pine and spruce conifer forests. This quickly changed to a very warm climate much drier. We have an influx of hardwood forests like we see today. And this pretty much stayed around for the next 10,000 years. The only real fluctuation in that occurred perhaps in the 16th and 17th centuries with the Little Ice Age, which was really prevalent in Europe and may have affected some of the late prehistoric sites here in Ohio. And the Little Ice Age ended around 1850, and we returned to this warmer and drier climate that we have today. Human beings did encounter Ice Age animals. A prime example of this is elephants. Both mastodons and mammoths were here and coincidentally became extinct uh, not too long after humans arrived. We know that many of the Ice Age mammals that we found in our region are now extinct. There are a couple of reasons for why that may be. It has been an area of some contention among scientists over the years. Certainly we know that the climate was changing. The glaciers that are found in the region are no longer here. So the climate changed, and that probably affected the presence of these animals to a great degree. It's also possible that the presence of Native Americans entering North America from Eurasia contributed to their extinction through overhunting. Both of those hypotheses or ideas have been argued by a variety of scientists. I suspect it's perhaps a combination of both explanations. Ooh, I can't go outside and explore around. I might get cold. What have I been telling you? The Ice Age is over. How cold can it be? So get out there and start exploring. I'm Rick Sowash, and you've not seen the last of me. I'll be here next time on Ohio Rocks.